morning, church. Morning. Are you morning. feeling cold this morning? No. <laughs> As a child of God, it should be hot. Amen. Amen. Hot for God, on fire Amen. for God. Amen. Even if the cold is there, but God makes us hot. Amen. Hallelujah. He's a consuming fire. He is fire. Amen. Hallelujah. We are blessed to be in God's house this morning. Amen. Yeah. There is power.
the way maker this morning. Hallelujah. He's the way maker this morning. Hallelujah. Where there is no way, our God will make a way.
encouragement will come. Hope will come. Revive, O oh Lord, the hearts of your people. Refresh them, I pray. Your wonderful name. Lord, O oh God, we thank you for the preaching and the teaching of your holy word. We thank you this morning. We love you so much, O oh God. As we turn the pages of your holy word, we see your great love for us. Reveal to us in the person of your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you so, so, so much. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We look away from distraction. We look away from circumstances. We look to Jesus. We look to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah. The anointed one. Look to him and him alone, a great high priest, the one who lives and reigns forevermore, constantly making intercession for us with you, O God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And in spite of what's happening in the world, in spite of what's happening around us, we can look to Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, last week I shared with you the preceding week about turning hopeless situations around. Now this morning, you know, I think I started that teaching with a statement and I said to you that the God we serve is a miracle working God. He's a God of miracles. As we look at the word of God from Genesis to Revelation, the Bible is loaded with miraculous accounts of God's power. It reveals to us who God is. Last week I mentioned something that caught my spirit while watching a sermon of another man of God. And how he shared that when God says, I am your deliverer, it means that you will go through stuff. But you'll not go through it alone. You're with God. And if God says, I am your deliverer, that means he's going to deliver you. Regardless of what circumstances may dictate to you. When he says, I am your healer, it means that yes, though sickness may come, though it come, it will not have power over you because you are the healer of the Lord. Amen. And God will heal you. Amen. He is your healer. You see, it, the, the ministry of the Christian, the ministry of the believer, is your profession. What are you professing? I am the healed of the Lord. I am the strong of the Lord. I am the saved of the Lord. I am the delivered of the Lord. I am the righteous of the Lord. Talk to me somebody. He says, I am your righteousness. You're not standing in your own righteousness. You're standing in his righteousness. The righteousness which Jesus Christ came to give us. You've received his righteousness. So if you've received his righteousness, if you've received his righteousness, you are righteous just as he is righteous. You are holy just as he is holy. Holy means set apart. I'm reminded of the account where the apostles, the book of Acts, where the church was being persecuted and they spoke to the Lord and they said, Now Lord, look upon their threats that have come upon us because we testify about your holy child Jesus. Meaning Jesus was set apart from the human race. There's something that set him apart. What was it? It was 
the Holy Spirit in him. The Spirit of God in him set him apart. Though, you know, those who saw him walk around them, live amongst them, they thought he was one of them, but he was not one of them. He was distinguished from them. I mean, when God spoke to Moses and the children of Israel were in Egypt, he said, I'll make a distinction between my people and the people of Egypt. You see, you are distinct from the rest of the world. Yes, things will happen. Things will come. But He is your everything. He is your El Shaddai. The God of more than enough. That is who God is. He's your God of more than enough. You don't need to look for another God. He is the only God. Oh, you got quiet on me. Amen. I said he is the only God. Amen. He's the one true God. Amen. You cannot compare him to anything else and anybody else. He's El Shaddai, the God of more than enough. And this morning I want to share with you about the steps the steps to not allow to not allowing your miracle to pass you by you know it's amazing how many christians how many believers are allowing miracles to step by to pass them by say not me go with me to the book of St. Mark's Gospel, chapter number 10. And I want to read from verse 46. The Word of God says, Now they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Another translation says, many charged him that he should hold his peace. <laughs> they charged him that he should hold his peace. They told him to be quiet. But Bartimaeus did not listen to the crowd. The Bible says, but he cried out all the more. The more they said to him, keep quiet. The more he began to cry out. Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer. Rise, he is calling you. <laughs> the same people who were charging him to keep his place. The same people who were telling him to shut up. The same people who were telling him to keep quiet. When Jesus stopped, when Jesus stopped, all of those voices where they were telling him, keep quiet, keep quiet, when Jesus stopped, they stopped. And when Jesus called him, they turned around. It was no longer keep quiet, it's now, hey, he's calling you. Imagine. Bartimaeus sitting down there and shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And someone right next to you, shut up, keep quiet, hold your place, hold your peace. In other words, 
The people were telling Bartimaeus, you know your place in society. You are a beggar, stay there. You are an underdog, stay there. You have no right to call on him. Because if you consider a beggar, he was probably there with a can, begging, begging for money or begging for food. His clothes tattered and torn. Probably hadn't bathed for days because he couldn't afford water. And here he stood, crying out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the crowds look at this beggar and think, oh man, this man that's smelling like this, this man that's dirty like this, how dare he? Keep quiet. Hold your place. Stay there. But the more they said, stay there, the more they said, no, you have no right to call on him. The more they had, the more they said, you have no right to have your say, the louder he became, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. In other words, be gracious to me. Have compassion on me. Take note of me. I may be a nobody in society, but I know, I've heard about you. People have told me about you. And as I'm shouting unto you, all I need is for you to take notice of me. And the people just kept on, keep quiet, keep quiet. And he cried out all the more. And then Jesus stopped, he stood still, and he commanded, watch it, he commanded him to be called. Wow. Listen. Jesus commanded. It meant that no matter what who said they, he gave a commandment. I don't care what you think about the man. I don't care what you say about the man. You call him and you bring him to me. That's what Jesus done. He stood still and he commanded him to be called. And all of a sudden, these people understood. They knew that this one that was walking, I mean, most of them, they didn't recognize him as the son of God. They knew him as a teacher, or they knew him as one of the prophets. And because he commanded, I was like, wow, he's calling that man. And I was calling that man names and telling that man to shut up. Now all of a sudden, I said, he's calling you. The very ones who were trampling him underfoot. When Jesus gave the command, they became at his mercy. You see, Jesus' command brought them down from their high horse to call that man that was down there. Call that man that was forgotten. Call that man that was down and out. Bring him here. They called to him and said, be of good cheer. Rise. He's calling you. And watch it. Throwing his garment aside, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? I want you to highlight that. I want you to um, underline that. I want you to make a mental note of that. I want you to cement that in your heart, in your spirit. I hear Jesus saying to you this morning, what do you want me to do for you? What a question. What do you want me to do for you? I told you he's the God of more than enough. I told you that with him all things are possible. You remember that last week? All things are possible with him. So he says, what do you want me to do for you? What a, man, what an invitation. What an invitation. What do you want me to do for you? He didn't say, I'm not going to do it. He didn't say, I cannot do it. He said, what do you want me to do for you? I was, you're not going to do it. But I'm going to do it. 
When I do it, I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to do it. Come on, talk to me. Out of my goodness, out of my good nature, I'm going to do it for you. What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, Rabbi, teacher, that I may receive my sight. Teacher, that I may receive my sight. Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. I want you to underline that. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Hallelujah. The other translation says, immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. In other words, he had a way that he was accustomed to, but now after Jesus opened his eyes, he now began to follow Jesus in his way. He, met, he, he now began to do things Jesus' way, God's way, because he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. One thing that is evident as you study the New Testament, you find constantly accounts where Jesus says, Thy faith has made thee well. Thy faith has made thee whole. Your faith has made you whole. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There's many accounts where Jesus says, Your faith has made you whole. Praise God. Jesus possess, possesses the power to heal, to save, to deliver, to raise up from the dead. He possesses the power to do all things. Yet he does not say, my power healed you. He didn't say to Bartimaeus, go your way, my faith, or oh, sorry, go your way, my power has healed you. He said to him, your faith has healed you. Amen. You see, it's not his power alone that will heal you. It's your faith coupled, connected to his power that heals you. Amen. The power is always available. It's always available. But it needs to be activated. You know, we have lights in the auditorium here. How do you switch these lights on? There's a light switch there on the wall. If I go to that light switch now and I turn it off, it will become dark in here. But the fact that the light that switches off does not mean that there's no power there. Because if you had to go to the wiring in the plug and touch it, I promise you, you'll dance. You'll start dancing. Now, my question is, that switches off. The power is still there. Where does the power come from? It comes from yes, God. Come on, talk to me. I mean, forget about load shedding now. I mean, there's no load shedding, that's why we have lights. But if I turn the power off, the power is still there. But there's something that needs to be turned on, to be switched on, to be activated, in order for the power to be released, to transmit the light, the energy, come up to the light bulb, to transmit light so that you can see. Now that's what your faith is. When Jesus says, your faith has made you whole, Jesus, he, listen, he, he, he knows that the power is available. The Bible says that when Jesus was teaching, the power of God was present to heal them all. The power was available to heal them all. As he was teaching, the power of God was present to heal them all. When Jesus was walking and the crowds were thronging against him, there was a woman with an issue of blood. What did she do? 
She activated, listen, she, listen, she turned on the switch and connected to the power so that the power could be released. And that's why Jesus says, somebody touched me. For I perceive the power, virtue has come forth from me. Somebody has received something from me. How did they receive it? How did she receive it? It was faith. He says, your faith has made thee whole. Your faith has made thee well. Your faith in my power. Your faith in my ability. He says, I am the resurrection and the life to Lazarus' sister. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Do you believe this? And says, yeah, I know. When Messiah comes, I am the Messiah. I'm standing in front of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He says, your faith, your faith did it. Your faith did it. Your faith did it. Bartimaeus, your faith did it. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has restored your sight. Hallelujah. The Bible says that Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to seek. He came on a mission to seek. A mission to seek. A mission to look for that which was lost. To seek and to save. Once he finds you, he saves you. Came to seek and to save that which was lost. And not just that, and to set the captives free. You see? You were once captive. Captive by sin. Captive by circumstances. But when you come to Jesus, he sets you free. Look at Bartimaeus. He was held captive by his blindness. Because of blindness, he couldn't earn a living. Because of his blindness, he couldn't go and work. He couldn't do nothing for himself because he was blind. He depended on other people to do it for him. Because he was captive. But when Jesus came, he sought him out, looked for him. Come and talk to me. He sought him out from the crowds. Why? Because Jesus, as he was going, he recognized that there's faith there. I mean, Jesus was teaching in a house, and that house was filled with so many people that there was no way to get into the house. There was no way in. And you find that four friends are bringing their friend to be healed, but they can't get into the door because it's overcrowded. And then they go up to the roof and they rip the tiles apart and they let him down and lay him before Jesus. Now the thing is, there were so many in that place, so many in that house, that were hearing Jesus teach. But none of them were healed except the man that was let down to the roof. That means there can be 10,000 people in a building listening to the same message but not everybody will receive it because you'll find the majority are questioning it uh, i really I'm, I'm really not sure about this yeah the ones that i'm really not sure they'll never receive but if a very well-known preacher were to preach the same message a well-known preacher preaches the same message. You'll find all of them people that would normally question, they say what? Amen. Preach it, brother. <laughs> Preach it, brother. What's the difference? The man who's not known was saying the same thing, but people question it because uh, we're really not sure. But someone well-known, you have no preach it, brother. And then if they've heard it from the unknown man and the well, excuse me, the well-known man says it, they say, ah, 
So that's where he got it from. Listen, dummy, you don't understand. We all have the same Bible, and it's the same Holy Spirit who's working in the unknown man and the well-known man. That's why you want to read the Bible for yourself. Read the Word for yourself so that you can see that, listen, what I'm listening to is truth. Because I shall know the truth and the truth shall set me free. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me tell you something. Romans 8 verse 11 says, If the same Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Jesus from the dead will quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit in you. My message to you is, He is here now to deliver you and set you free. That means you have residing in your body a miracle working spirit. That's why Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. You are a child of God. You are not an orphan. You are not alone in this world. You are not left to fend for yourself. You have another helper, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the living God, living on the inside of you. He is a miracle working spirit. He is here now to deliver you. He's here now to save you. He's here now to give you your miracle. Let me tell you something. Your mother can't do it for you. Your family can't do it for you. I can't do it for you. It's not up to, listen, it's not up to God. It's not up to me. It's not up to anybody except yourself. It's up to you to receive your miracle. God is giving you a miracle. No one can receive it for you except you and you alone. you got to be the one to say, I don't care what's happening around me. I don't care what they're saying around me. But I, one thing I know, one thing I know is He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the miracle worker. He is the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, liar in the You see, we sing that song, but you get there into the real world during the week. And you forget about the words that you were singing on Sunday. You come to church. They make many colors. The first, the first sign of trouble in your week. Oh Lord, what am I going to do now? What happened to those shoes that were dancing in church and saying, Waymaker, I don't care, I may not see it, but he's a waymaker, miracle worker. I know, he's a promise keeper. He promised it to me, he's going to do it for me, he's going to bring me through. I don't care, Father, what I'm seeing. I don't care, Father, what I'm feeling, but I know you're going to come through for me. I know you're going to make a way for me. You did it for Israel before the Red Sea. You're going to do it for me. You did it for Israel in the wilderness. You're going to do it for me. Come on, talk to me. Jesus Christ has made you worthy 
The blood of Jesus Christ has made you worthy. The blood of Jesus has made a way for humanity. The blood of Jesus has made a way for all mankind. It doesn't matter whether you're small or whether you're big. It doesn't matter whether you're poor or whether you're rich. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter your circumstances. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You may be a murderer. You may be a thief. You may be a harlot. I don't care what you are. But if you can connect to the blood of Jesus, if you can connect and say, Lord Jesus, oh son of David, have mercy on me. If you can connect, if you can say to him, you can say, Jesus, son of God, save me. He came to save you. It doesn't matter what you've done. He says, my blood was poured out for you. My blood has paid the price for you. You can be set free. You can be made whole. Talk to me, somebody. Because of my blood, I bring you. I brought you into covenant. I bring you into covenant by my blood. The blood of Jesus made the way. Step number one is to break out of your limits. Break out of your limitations. Break out of your traditions, your customs, your comfort zone, and society's normal. Society tells you it's normal. It is not normal. Break out of your natural. You see, Bartimaeus was blind. He didn't know what was happening around him. But he knew that there's something there. Because he couldn't see it, but he heard it. And he began to ask, What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? People said, haven't you heard? Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He says, Jesus of Nazareth? Is that the one that's been healing all the sick? Is that the one that caused the lame to walk? Is that the one who, who raised Lazarus from the dead? Is that the one who entered the town called Main? When he got to the town, the entrance of the, of the town called Main, and they were carrying a coffin with a corpse of a young man who had died and his mother was there weeping. That very one who raised that young boy from the dead and brought him to life, is that the one that was in the wilderness with the multitude and there was nothing there but he fed them. He had the biggest feast in the wilderness with nothing. That same Jesus, you see, yes, that same Jesus is passing by. Because the more, the more Bartimaeus was hearing of what Jesus was doing, the more faith began to arise within him. That's why it's so important what you're listening to. It's so important who you're listening to. Them folk that are telling you you're sick, let me tell you you're not sick. You are the healed of the Lord. You are the healed of the Lord. He heals the sick. He heals the sick. He causes the lame to walk. He raises the dead. Are you hearing me somebody? As Bartimaeus is hearing all that about Jesus, Bartimaeus saw himself as a candidate. You've got to see yourself as a candidate. He said, yes, there were many with hopeless situations, but he turned those situations around. He's going to turn my situation around. He's going to turn my life around. He says, that same Jesus, that same Jesus of Nazareth is passing by the son of David. The one that was spoken of by the prophets, we've heard it prophesied about him. The root of Jesse, the son of David, yes, that same Jesus. He said, well, I don't care about who's around me and who says what, but I'm going to cry out unto him. I need to get his attention. 
He began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And the crowds, you see, this church, sometimes the church can silence you. Sometimes the church can silence you. You know your place. You say in this church, yes, these countrymen, they were all of the same religion, they were all Jews. They were all Jews. He identified with him as the son of David. We being Gentiles, we identify with him as the son of God. You see that? This church was telling him, listen, keep quiet, keep your place. You are beggar. You are unclean, you're dirty. You're just a nobody. You know your place in society. Stay there. His church was telling him, you keep quiet. He said, no, but I don't care what you say. That's the son of God that's walking past the son of David. I'm going to cloud even more. The more they shouted, the louder he became. The more they shouted, the louder he became. I'm here to tell you that the more people are telling you to be afraid, the more you rise up in faith. The more they tell you that you are nothing, the more you rise up in faith. The more they tell you you never make it, the more you rise up in faith. Are you here to be somebody? Your faith has to be loud. Loud faith. I spoke on Friday the message about crazy faith. When crazy faith is there, crazy stuff begins to happen. Are you hearing me, somebody? Hallelujah. Martin Mayer was not worried about the crowds. He wasn't worried about the church. He says, I don't care what they say. I don't care what they think. I don't care what they do. But he can save me. I saw myself being healed because if he healed others, he's going to heal me too. Hallelujah. The thing is, if you want your miracle to happen, you have to do something about it. Your miracle is available, but you've got to do something about it. Bartimaeus did something about it. He did something about it, so you've got to do something. Tell your neighbor, you've got to do something about it. Hallelujah. He began to shout. He began to speak. Listen, faith, with real faith speaks. Real faith deafens the voices of doubt and fear and unbelief. Real faith rises to the occasion. Real faith connects you. Real faith connects you to the one who gives you faith. The power of God always recognizes the cry of faith, not the cry of fear. The cry of faith. I said to you, you have to do something. Listen, if you're not going to do something about it, then the enemy is going to do it on your behalf. If you're not going to do something about your miracle, the enemy is going to do it on your behalf. And what's he going to do? He's going to make sure you don't get it. He's going to make sure he silences you. He's going to make sure he silences your faith. He's going to make sure that he shuts you down. But you don't give him place. The Bible says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. Be careful, be vigilant, be sober, be vigilant for your adversity the devil. Roams around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He knows, he knows, he knows, he knows who he can play with. He knows who he can touch and he knows who he can't. See that? He was using the crowd to keep Bartimaeus in his place. But Bartimaeus said, no ways. I'll show you where's your place. Get behind me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The power of God always recognizes the cry of faith. With Step number two is to cast away your past. Cast away your past. 
Verse 50 says, And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. You know, how do you recognize a nurse and a doctor? How do you recognize them? How do you recognize a policeman? How do you recognize a soldier? How do you recognize someone who's working in the bank? How do you recognize somebody who's working at a supermarket? How do you recognize the person, what, what job a person has? How do you recognize that? By the uniform, by the clothes they wear. You see, Bartimaeus had beggar garments. He had beggarly garments. He couldn't afford the garments that everybody else was wearing. Because he had his lot. That was all he was accustomed to and used to. But when Jesus called him, verse 50 says, He threw his garments aside. He took out his beggarly garments and he threw them aside. And he ran to Jesus. Throw your past away. Throw your, listen, throw your past away. Throw the doubt and unbelief, throw that away. Throw away doubt. Throw away negativity. Throw it away. Throw away fear. Take a step of faith. Run to Jesus. Told you the people changed. He started saying, instead of saying, keep quiet, now he's saying, hey, he's looking for you. He's calling you. He's saying, he's saying Bartimaeus, you're the man of the moment. Come on, you're the woman of the moment. Felix, you're the man of the moment. Jimmy, you're the man of the moment. Avi, you're the man of the moment. Sunny, you're the man of the moment. Nero, you're the man of the moment. Ronnie, you're the man of the moment. Come and talk to me. If you're here in this place right now under my voice, if you're watching me, I'm here to tell you, you are the person of the moment. This is your moment. This is your time. This is your season. Can you say it to somebody? Yeah. One thing is certain, when your moment arises, when your season arises, you've got to do something about it. Bartimaeus knew. Hallelujah. So he threw away his garments. And when he gets to Jesus, Jesus asks him, What do you want me to do for you? He's asking you that question right now. What do you want me to do for you? Bartimaeus was blind. Bartimaeus was a beggar. Bartimaeus could have asked and said, Lord, I don't have clothes. I mean, I've been wearing the same garments year in, year out. They're tattered and torn. They're smelling. I need garments. Bartimaeus could have said, Lord, I need a plate of food because I'm begging. Nobody wants to feed me. I have no food. Bartimaeus could have asked and said, Lord, I need money. I've got nothing to buy anything. Bartimaeus could have cried and said, Lord, I don't have a house. I don't have shelter over my head. I'm homeless. Bartimaeus, he could have listed all those things. I mean, there's so many things that were at his disadvantage. So many things. But Jesus asked the question, what do you want me to do for you? He asked you that question now. I promise you, if you had to have that opportunity to present them to him, you'd need to go 
Get so many books in all the supermarkets, in all the stationary places because you want to list upon list upon list. It will be kilometers of requests. We were all children. Some of us have children of our own. When it's time for a birthday or for Christmas, you ask your child, you are probably asked by your parents or you ask your child, what would you like for your birthday? What would you like for Christmas? And knowing a little child, that child has so much faith in the parent and the parent's ability, that child is not even afraid to ask. Mom, I want, come on, if it's a girl, I want a doll, I want a doll house. I want nice clothes, I want nice shoes, I want uh, you know, I want a new hairstyle, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. If it's a boy, I want a car, I want a motorbike, I want, you understand? It's so many things. What do you want me to do for you? The list is endless. Eventually, your parents or even you, you get sick of hearing this long list. You say, listen, enough is enough. What do you want specific? Give me the one thing you want the most. That's the third step. Be specific. Be specific. He'll give you all things. But sufficient for the day. The troubles of the day. He gives you your bread for today. Daily bread. I mean Israel. Daily they received the manna. Each man went to gather a quota. And they only gathered for what was sufficient for the day. They didn't gather and say, oh, you know, I'm going to think about tomorrow too. You see, we get those tomorrow people. I'm going to think about tomorrow, I'm going to think about Tuesday, I'm going to think about Wednesday, I'm going to think about Thursday, I'm going to think about next month, I'm going to think about next year, I'm going to think about all that. What happened? If they gathered too much manna, whatever remained, the next day, it rotted away, it decayed, it wasted. Be specific. Bartimaeus would have asked for all the things that I, that I told you were his disadvantage. But he asked for one thing, his sight. Because he knew if he had his sight, he wouldn't need anybody to bath him, anybody to clothe him, Anybody to do anything for him, he'd be able to do it for himself. Hallelujah. Be specific. Tell your neighbor, be specific. Be specific. Specifics. Hallelujah. Jesus is still asking that same question today. What do you want me to do for you? What do you want? Be specific. Because let me tell you, brothers and sisters in Christ, every day you live your life on earth, your needs become more numerous. Every day you live your life on earth. The things that you need, the things you needed yesterday, today you need even more than that. Tomorrow you need even more than what you needed today. There's so many, but you've got to pick out one, be specific. Just this one thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, 1 Timothy 5 verse 8 says, If any man, if any man provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Like somebody say, I'm, I'm just going to take a step of faith. I'm leaving my work and I'm going to live by faith only. I'm only going to live by faith. That's all I'm going to live by. Then you know what happens? The children go hungry. The bills don't get paid. The house gets repossessed. The car gets repossessed. Everything gets repossessed. Everything gets taken. They starve. Why? Because they just 
well, I'm just going to leave and I'm just going to live by faith. Faith without works is dead. Come and talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've got to work with your hands. You've got to provide for your family. If you can't provide for your family, the Bible says that. The Bible, it's not me who's saying it, it's the Word of God. Go read it for yourself. 1 Timothy 5, verse 8. You deny the faith. Regardless of how difficult it may be, you don't jump ship. Regardless of how low the salary is, you don't jump ship. You have faith in God that God will open the door. You don't close the business. You have faith that God will come through for you. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. God is with me. God is my provider. When he says, I am your provider, he, listen, he's saying, there's going to be time you're going to have needs. I don't worry about the needs. I will provide. I will provide. I will make the way. I'll do it. Artemis cast away his garments. That demonstrates great faith. Not only was he speaking faith, but he did faith. Took off his garments. Ripped them to pieces. Take your past and strip it from yourself. Break out of it. Break out of hurt. Break out of disappointment. Break out of despair. Hallelujah. Philippians 3, 13 to 14, Paul tells us, Forgetting those things which are behind, I press forward to the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ. Forget the past. Bartimaeus called unto God when his day came. Today, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, today is your day to call to the same God that Bartimaeus called you. Today is your day. Today is your moment. Seize the moment. Only believe. Bartimaeus did that. Bartimaeus believed. You see? First thing he done, he started calling. Faith calls. And when you call him, if you call your child, if you call your child and you say, come here, what does your child do? Or you call their name, what do they do? Yes. Yes, you always get a response. You see, faith calls to God. And God hears faith when it's calling. And he responds to the call of faith. He responds to the call of faith. Sister Jay, she God, listen, you're calling. And God says, yes, Jay, she, I'm here. Yes, Mama. I'm here. I heard you calling me, Venetia. Yes. Why are you call? Wow. Jimmy, do you see that? You call for him. And he says, yes, I'm here. He answers that call. It's the call of faith. He says, you're saying that I can do it. Yes, I'm here, and I'll do it. <laughs> you believe it. You believe I'll do it? Yes, I'm going to do it. So like Bartimaeus today, you can stand up and you can say, Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me. Hallelujah. Bartimaeus, I told you, took himself of his garments. If only you can believe, you will receive. Only you can believe, you will receive. Your faith is what gets you into the kingdom of God. Your faith in 
And what the blood of Jesus Christ has done for you gets you into the kingdom of God. Your faith in the blood of Jesus cleanses you from all sin. Your faith is what gets you healed. Your faith is what gets you released from the habits that keep you bound. Your faith. You want to give up addictions and give up habits? Have faith. Take a step of faith and say, Today I'm rising above this addiction. Today I'm rising above this habit. Today I'm rising above this belief system. I'm rising above it and I'm breaking out of it. Your faith will come on top. I remember the day I gave up smoking. I was sitting at work the one day and I looked at the packet of cigarettes and I thought, my God, I'm a grown man. A small thing like this, a small cancer stick, is going to dictate to me. I mean, I have no chimney. Pray. 
I was, man, I was on another cloud. At times I'd even tell her, hey, I don't need your praise, you keep quiet. But she prayed. And here I am today, by the grace of God. Come on, somebody, God pray. God can do it. Your faith. The power of God is always involved in faith, in your miracle. Power of God is always involved in your miracle. And it takes faith to release that power into your situation. It takes faith to release that power into your circumstance. That is what Jesus was talking about when he said, Your faith has made you whole. One thing we find with Bartimaeus, and I think that's the problem with many people, they throw away the past. They take the garment of the past, they throw it away. They answer. But then you find, instead of walking in the way, they go back to the same garments. The Bible says a dog returns to its own vomit. You are not a dog. You vomited it out. Move away from it. Ah, oh, you are here to be somebody. Bartimaeus didn't say, Jesus, thank you. I received my sight. I took out my garments. I'm naked now. I need to go get my clothing. No. He left those garments and he followed Jesus. You left the old man and you walked. Jesus, you walk in Christ. The new man created in Christ. You walk in the consciousness of your new nature, not your old nature. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. By God, all things have become new. Behold, come my God. The old is gone, the new is here. Hallelujah. I'm speaking to some sisters now this morning. You may have been disappointed in the relationships you've had and you've built a wall and you, you know, it's a wall of distrust. Shake yourself of the distrust. Shake yourself. Come on, shake yourself of the distrust. Your poem is on his way. See, Ruth had to shake herself of the disappointment of losing her husband. She shook widowhood of herself. Shake it off. Shake the dust off your feet. Why? When you shake the dust off your feet, that's what Jesus said to his disciples. Shake the dust off your feet. As a testimony against that thing. When you shake the dust, you say, that thing has no control over me. I know who I am in Christ. I'm walking in the consciousness of who I am in Christ. I don't care what people have said about me or what they are saying. I know what God is saying. I know what he's saying. Hallelujah. God said, I believe it. I don't care what I see. I don't care what I hear. I don't care what I feel. God said it. It's truth. I believe what God said. If God be for you. Who can be against you? Who shall lay any charge against the elect of God? You are the elect of God. 
You are elected by the grace of God. By the grace of God, you are who you are. Hallelujah. Come on, every head bowed, every eye closed. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to minister the Lord God. A simple story in the life of Bartimaeus. From the word of God to your precious people. To inspire them, O oh God, to believe, to receive. I thank you and your power, Lord God, shall work as they begin to cast aside all doubt, all fear and unbelief. I thank you, Lord, that they shall, Lord God, receive. As they receive, Lord God, they'll begin to cry out, Jesus, now, Son of God, I come to you now in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that they'll rise up in faith, O oh Lord, and not look at circumstances and not take thought of what's happening around them or the things that the world is saying. But they'll hold on to the word of God, the truth of your word, which sets free. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray that as your people go, that they'll walk in faith, O oh God. In faith, knowing that as they call, Lord God, you will answer. For you said it in your word, O oh God, call unto you, O oh God, and you will show us great and marvelous things, O oh God, that we know not about. And I thank you, Lord, that you'll answer the call of your people this morning. I thank you, Lord, you'll hear the prayers and the petitions of their hearts this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of death, I pray that this will be a blessed week. I pray for the month of June as they enter this new month, O oh God. Let it be a glorious month. Let them, Lord God, realize that it is a month of great faith. I thank you, Lord, that they walk in faith and they experience, Lord God, your supernatural power and work in their lives on a daily basis. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with each and every one of you, both now and forevermore, in Jesus' magnificent name. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life you continually dwell in the house of the Most High God, both now and forevermore. In blessing, may the Lord bless you. In multiplying, may He multiply you. May the Lord God confirm, bring to pass every promise and every word He has given unto you. In Jesus' blessed name, I thank you, Father. And I cover your people in the precious blood of Jesus Christ, your Son. The Lamb of God was slain for us. Cover their homes, cover their families. Thank you, Lord God. You, Lord God, will protect your people. You will keep them safe. They'll be far, Lord God, from tyranny. Far, Lord God, from every evil report. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you all the glory and the worship. In your precious name, dear sweet Jesus, we pray. And the Church of God say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come and pray for worship. Let's have a song. Thank you, Lord. I get no fun and no chesu. There's nobody like Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, look at your neighbor. Put some attitude. And say, hey. Come on, just say, hey. Come on, do it like this. Listen, attitude. 